Hey, Lars here, and welcome back to another video. As I promised in the last one, this is a loot overview from my 4000 lower cursed runs. A huge thank you uh, on the support for the last video. That one uh, definitely blew up. And I definitely agree with uh, most of you saying that uh, I would regret if I cube up all my uh, mid rooms to just make one uh, yard room. But more on that in the next episode. As I said, this is gonna be an overview of the runes, charms, gems and so on from all my runs. So you might have an idea of uh, what to expect if you wanna try this grind out yourself. I have created uh, timestamps for the different sections if you're mostly interested in a specific part. But no more stalling, let's get into uh, the runes. As you can see, we mostly found uh, mid runes and uh, only a few high Rooms, especially uh, quite a lot of pull rooms and mal rooms and to be honest quite a few more vex rooms than anticipated sadly it only ended up with two so rune drops which i was definitely hoping for a few more of if we take a look at the drop patterns from the lower course super chests on player difficulty 7 or 8 it looks like that even with a small sample size of 4000 runs you can still kind of see the patterns. The odds of getting a pull, an um or a mal is way higher than getting, say, a low or a bear room. And it is very clear that I got most pull rooms and then mal rooms. I don't really know what happened about the um rooms though. Sir rooms has nine patterns of both locked and unlocked chests. I feel like I should have had like one or two more drops. Especially if we consider that I somehow managed to get six Vex rune. As you can see, low has the same chance as a per rune, so sadly I guess we ended up with the with the low round this time around. If you're interested in the probability of getting the different kinds of rooms and how many runs you're expected to to run to get them. I feel like just a Google search gave me uh, a few very good resources. So I would encourage that if you're considering doing this grind, just so you know what you're getting yourself into. And let's get on with all the skillers, starting off with the ones for the Amazon. We found two Javelin and Spear skillers, one with 34 and one with uh, 31 life, which are both great and I'm definitely going to be using those. Three to uh, passive and magic skills and lastly two to uh, bow and crossbows. For the assassin I ended up finding five skillers with plus one to uh, martial arts so I feel like that's definitely a sign that uh, I'm gonna be making an assassin later. Other than that we got three for uh, traps and uh, three for uh, shadow discipline. Moving on to the necromancer where we got two to uh, poison and bone skills, four charms with a plus one to uh, summoning skills, and one of them rolled with uh, 31 life, which is a pretty damn good charm. There were also uh, three with a plus one to curses, and one of them rolled uh, 28 life. Next up is uh, the Barbarian, where I ended up getting four combat skillers, three uh, Warcry skillers, where one had 32 and one had uh, 30 life, and then uh, four mastery ones that I'm not sure that I'm ever going to be using. The class where I got the least skillers were definitely the paladin. Plus one offensive auras with the five to life and plus one defensive auras with the 19 to life. I actually managed to get quite a few sorcerer skillers but they were not for the spec I wanted the most. As you can see I picked up four fire skillers while at least the one lightning skiller is uh, really nice with the plus 25 life and only one cold skiller. As for the druid we got three uh, shapeshifter ones one summoning skiller and one to uh, elemental skills. Here's all the random small charms and a couple of fun uh, grand charms. Two 7% uh, magic find ones, the 20 life 11 mana charm, then a couple of ones with the uh, resistances, uh, 11 resistances, 20 life, uh, more 20 lifers and uh, one 17 life and uh, 11 resistances. So uh, a couple of nice ones. And then there's all the lesser good ones, I feel like, uh, which are non-perfect ones, like with the 10% roll or uh, less magic find rolls. These grand charms were just, I feel like there are a lot of stats on them, but I'm probably never going to be using them. It just shows you how many almost good charms you'll find uh, but luckily, sometimes they will roll uh, 
roll really well and you'll get a perfect one. I guess they can still be used on new characters if you just want to uh, fix your resistances somewhat. I feel like I was pretty good at uh, picking up uh, Lola's gems most of the way through, but I guess sometimes you just were in a hurry or you didn't care to clean the stash and uh, then I probably wouldn't pick them up for a couple of hundred runs. Almost five bangles with the full inventories of uh, perfect gems. And I guess you're right in thinking that they're not full anymore, but uh, look at which gem is missing. It is the amethysts, which I am of course going to be using to uh, do some caster crafts. And hopefully land a 220 uh, neck for either my sorcerer or maybe uh, for an assassin. But that's pretty much it. I hope this gave you a small idea of what to expect if you uh, do this many runs. And that it's not only the rune drops that keeps you going, but also the hopes of finding uh, nice skillers and maybe a couple of uh, good small charms with magic find or high resistances. And of course you're gonna have so many gems. So aside from the caster crafts, I'm probably also gonna do some uh, charm rerolls eventually. I just need to grind uh, a bunch from a high level uh, terra zone so they can roll the magic. I hope you're looking forward to the next episode and as always if you're still here. Thank you so much for watching Lass out